Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to The Source, your source for celebrity news. Check this out. Joe Budden, who has no problem sharing his opinion about everything except for P. Diddy, is now apologizing to Beyonce for throwing shade at her and her new country song, Texas Hold'em. On Thursday, Joe walked back recent comments that he made on the Joe Budden podcast where he refused to share his opinion on the track because, as he says, he's not a country music critic. When his co-host pressed him for his thoughts about the album, Joe adamantly declared, I'm not listening to Beyonce. Beyonce's country album. Well now, Joe Budden seems to have changed his tune and he's turned around and he's praising Beyonce and her new song. Joe said, I want to apologize to Beyonce before breaking out into his own rendition of Texas Hold'em. Oh, this ain't Texas. Ain't no Hold'em. When talking about Beyonce's new song, Joe said, I like that song. I like the other song too, but I like that song a lot. And let me tell you something, let me be totally phony and get on the total opposite of everything I said the first time. If the rumors are true, if Beyonce is covering Dolly Parton's Jolene, if that little rumor is true, cause Dolly just tweeted yesterday and that tweet ain't out of nowhere, if Beyonce does that, oh my god, get Mason Ramsey to open up. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Budden is so full of crap, and I can just see him now bumping Jolene in the car. Listen, if Beyonce has accomplished nothing else with these new songs, she has at least made people who swore up and down that they don't like country music realize that they really do like a little bit of country music. Now, peep this. DJ Academics has now come out and said that Meek Mills is a snitch for allegedly calling the cops on him after him and Meek Mills got into a little back and forth over P. Diddy. So this is what happened. The other day, DJ Academics went over some of the key points in the new lawsuit that Rodney Jones Jr. filed against P. Diddy, including the fact that a rapper whose name was redacted in the documents was over there doing the sideways cha-cha with Diddy. Like many any other YouTubers, academics then went down to the footnotes which stated that the person whose name was redacted was a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. And like everybody else, DJ Academics came to the logical conclusion that the person who was over there allegedly doing a man-on-man -man mambo with P. Diddy was Meek Mills. Now, Meek Mills, who somehow managed to miss the fact that everybody in a mama was reporting the same story, jumped online to check Big Ack, and he told academics to keep his name out of his mouth. And this led to a whole bunch of back and forth, in which Meek Mills said that academics was an alcoholic that was fully powered by the white man, and he also asked for DJ Academic's address so that he could pull up. All right, so after Meek asked for DJ Academic's address, Academic's responded by saying, Ninja, when you talk about asking for my address online, you talking about death games. You must think you invincible. You don't talk about pulling up on street ninjas' homes because you ain't on that with them. So don't be on that with me. In response, Meek just wrote, I'll die to shut you down. So then, DJ Academics jumped back online and wrote, You bunny hop for Michael Rubin, Robert Kraft, and get called boy by billionaires. You they house ninja, slave. You ask for all your financial advice on Twitter, because the billionaires you around, you just doing chores for them. Ninja, that's half the reason you fell off. The image don't match. So after that, DJ Academics was live streaming and he paused because he was like, hold up y'all, I think Meek Mills done sent the police to my house. Check this out. This with all the bullshit. I think it's, I think it's Meek Mills done sent the cops to my house, bro. Yeah, yo, I don't know if y'all hear my dogs and shit like that. The police is outside my house now. You, you, you see that's what I'm telling you about like Meek, bro? If he was really about to do nothing, he would have never tweeted it, bro. He got a police in my town now, like, outside my fucking house. Watch this. My dogs is going crazy upstairs. Holy shit. I'm telling you, this is what I'm telling you, bro. This, this, this got police at my house now, bro. Like, you over here tweeting out, like, you on my... Like, of course police going to come to my house. Nigga, the fucking... Give me one second. <sighs> police at my yo, Mima got the police at my house, gang. Man, I'm sick, man. 
I'm telling I yo, if me gay snitch on me, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done with rap. I swear, I promise you. If me gay snitch on me, I swear I'm done with rap. <laughs> yeah, you see that. Man, look, I got it, look. I, I, I might have to, I don't even know if I gotta cut the stream. Boy sent the police to my house talking about what's his Addy. Look, I promise you, look. Look. Police sent police to my crib, my All that sent police to my crib, gang. This is crazy. All that gangster shit, like he the biggest killer. The governor calling him, he sent police to my crib, I swear. Bro, this nigga Meek, you a whole snitch, This shit is crazy. This is holy crap, like, I'm, yo, this whole, like, if you was on whatever, you got my address. Why are you over here tweeting the shit, bro? Yo, give me a second, man. Let me go. Bro, this really got police at my crib. Yo, I'm done. Okay, so after Big Act went off to talk to the cops, people online started talking too. And one person said, it too hit different when the street rappers call the cops on Big Act. And then somebody else said, and you believe anything this meatball says, right? How you know he didn't call the cops on himself and record for more views and keep it going? <laughs> Yo, I think that social media is creating a societal psychosis, which is like affecting everybody. Cause this right here is crazy. Listen, let me know. Do you think that Meek Mills called the cops on DJ Academics? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Now, peep this. Boxers Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia are scheduled to go head to head for the WBC super lightweight belt at Barclays Center in Brooklyn on April 20th. 20th. But it appears that the two boxers are already throwing low blows at each other because the other day Ryan Garcia posted a video online of himself working out and in the video he's rocking a t-shirt which has a picture of Puffy and Haney together shirtless in a swimming pool. The photo appears to have been taken at a party hosted by P. Diddy and was initially posted on Instagram by Haney himself who captioned it, they say you gotta be in to make it to Diddy's swimming pool. <laughs> Oh my goodness, yo, why do these dudes keep playing themselves like this? Anyhow, check out the video. <laughs> yo, do you just happen to have that like t-shirt in a closet? Or do you have to go somewhere and get that specially made? Anyhow, the t-shirt is making me think of the lawsuit that just dropped against Diddy. And something that was said in the lawsuit has really been bothering me. In bullet point number 53 of the lawsuit, Rodney Jones' attorney says, Throughout his time living with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his backside by Mr. Combs. Alright, so this is a 100% real legitimate question and it's been bothering me, so I want your input. You're a grown behind straight man, you're in the studio, you're fully clothed and you're making a beat. How in the world does P. Diddy go around to the backyard and ring the back door doorbell with his finger without you shutting that mess down and slamming the door in his face? Listen, let me know, is there any scenario in the world, barring a Mickey or Force, where like P. Diddy can come to your back door unsolicited and ring that doorbell and you just open up the door and let him in? <laughs> let me know in the comments. Okay, so as we speak, Rihanna's gearing up to perform for India's richest man, billionaire tycoon Mukesh Ambani. According to sources, Riri touched down in Jamnagar, India on Friday, where she's set to sing at the pre-wedding bash for Ambani's son. And for her performance, Riri's gonna be taking home a staggering $6.3 million, which is the same amount that Ambani paid for Beyonce to perform at his daughter's wedding about a year ago. Listen, all I can say is get your money, girl. Get your money. <laughs> I mean, really, could you imagine somebody paying you $6.3 million for one night's worth of work? 
<laughs> wow. See, now I'm feeling duped because God gave me like a whole bunch of talents, but none of my talents are like things that people would want to pay six million dollars for. <laughs> God gave me the set of talents where like, if I really tried, I might be able to get $25, $30 on a good day. Now, check this out. We all know that it's been some years since Cardi B has dropped a full album. And the other day, Offset went online and told his wife that he thought that she was scared to release new music. Well now, Cardi B has proven that she ain't scared. Because the other day, Cardi B dropped a new video for her new single, Like What? Freestyle. The video, which was directed by her husband Offset, showcases Cardi B rocking a really big fur and a little, little bikini, rapping over a beat with a sample from Missy Elliott's She's That Beat. In the song, Cardi isn't holding back either, and she seems to be taking shots at a number of her perceived enemies, including Nicki Minaj. For example, in one of her verses, Cardi says, Everything you got I had five years before, which seems to be a reference to Bodak Yellow topping the Billboard Top 100 half a decade before Nicki's Super Freaky Girl. Listen, I listen to Cardi's new song, and I think it's alright. I'm not sure whether it was the song that she should have came back with, but that's just me. Let me know what you think. Do you think that Cardi B's new song is mad strong? Let me know in the comments. But, while we're talking about the strength of some of today's hip-hop songs, MC Shan is not happy with the current state of hip-hop, and he's speaking his mind about it. Check out what MC Shan had to say. You don't think that hip-hop as a genre is just so much more competitive because of the battle aspect and it coming from the streets? Hip-hop is not hip-hop anymore. You're talking about something that's past and dead and gone. I don't even bother with hip-hop anymore. You see, I build stuff. I make jewelry. I do all kind of stuff. You watch? Hip-hop doesn't interest me anymore. Because if you're interested in hip-hop, that's fine. That's that Frere Jaca, Frere Jaca, Dome Vu, Dome Vu. If that suits your intellect, that's fine. Me, I'm into certain, you know, Frederick Chopin and Mozart when it comes to lyrics. And so this day of hip hop is nothing like the Frederick Chopins and Mozart's of lyrics that I've listened to in my days. Y'all are just there and and it doesn't interest me. It doesn't pique my interest because I'm my intellect level is way against way above nursery rhymes, okay? So the interview will win on to ask MC Shan if it was safe to say that hip-hop and rap have evolved and what was going on yesterday was hip-hop whereas what's going on today is rap and this is what MC Shan had to say that's bullcrap because how you gonna separate it because oh now you just saying oh it's all rhymes right so it's hip-hop mm -hmm. and y'all fucked around and tried to make a new genre of it just to pass that bullshit off on us that's it oh that's not hip-hop this is rap what does that mean? So then, the person who was interviewing him was like, so, do you consider mumble rap to be rap, or do you consider it to be like a subcategory? Check out MC Shan's response. Mumble, I don't even consider mumble rap as a, see, that's what I'm saying. Why can't it just be one? There always has to be, the powers that be always put things where you've got something to look at, something to be negative about. You know what I'm saying? So instead of it just being one thing, now the, the business that we're going to put these guys in, which is going to make those guys mad. And now we just looking at each other while they stealing all the money. Are you getting it? Yeah. They always put something in the game that makes you not look at where who's stealing the money for real. Because I think that you know, especially with the streaming platforms and everything, now they separated to be like, oh, this is lyrical rap. This is mumble rap. This is, you know, it's like a lot of different. But who are they to say what we do? See, this is what I'm talking about. Who are they? Who are they to tell me what my genre of music is, what my culture of music is, what we're supposed to, who are they? They didn't have anything to do with this. So why the fuck should I be listening to what they say? Right. I don't listen to what they say. You say there's rappers. I don't say there's rappers. I say they whack as fuck. They whack MCs. I don't even call them rappers. But as far as all of this breaking down and those stupid books do that. 
I've had an, uh, I've had a little confrontation with a certain individual not too long ago about him saying that I don't even want to bring that shit up because that's some past shit to me. Let me just leave that alone. You know what I'm saying? That that really was like you know. Ah, forget it. <laughs> okay, right. it. You sure, I'm gonna, <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. I'm gonna leave that alone because right. that's nothing. That's nothing that I'm scared of or nothing like that. But see, people don't think that I have a mental intellect that that, that I do because I I fool people because I make you think that I'm dumb until the minute you try to play me, and then the minute you try to play me, you find out that man is so much smarter than I thought. I should have just shut the fuck up and left him alone. <laughs> Yo, you gotta love MC Shan. And let me tell you something. I had a chance to hang out with Shan back in the day. And I gotta tell you, totally intelligent, totally like the most respectable dude that you ever wanna meet. I mean, perfect gentleman. We were in the car together. And I mean, this dude got out the car and opened my door and everything. I mean, I have so much respect for Shan. Listen, let me know what you think about Joe Budden apologizing to Beyonce for his country music criticism. DJ Academics calling Meek Mills a snitch. Ryan Garcia trolling Devin. Devin Haney with the Diddy t-shirt, Rihanna performing in India for six million dollars, Cardi proving an offset that she ain't scared to drop new music, and MC Shan saying this ain't rap. I don't know what the heck this is. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source, your source for celebrity news. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Peace.